So she walks in the house, walks into her little basement suite and goes downstairs and sits and she's stuck in the fantasy going, what was that? What was that? It felt so real. It felt so real. Who is he? I couldn't have just imagined that in my mind. It was way too descriptive, too vivid. Was it a past life? Was that a suppressed memory? from a past life? Was it a premonition of something to come? She was mystified. And she sat in confusion, still completely aroused, trying to calm herself and bring herself to down from that level. She's struggling because she likes where she was. In reality, now it seems boring. And then you do the split screen. And he, he's in his car. The sun is completely set. And now he's just going, who? What was that? And he's thinking to himself at the exact same time that she's thinking to herself. That was too real to be just my imagination. And all of a sudden he finds like he's longing for whatever experience he was experiencing. He doesn't want it to end. And he's like, how do I get back there again? Like, who is she? Where is she? And he finds himself driving around aimlessly, just, he's searching for her, but he doesn't know he's searching for her. He's just driving around because he doesn't want to go home. He, he doesn't know what he's looking for, but he knows he doesn't want to go home. And he figures, like... If he keeps driving around, he's going to emotionally connect with that fantasy again because that fantasy became an imprint. And that imprint was sent to his subconscious mind. And his subconscious mind processed that fantasy as though it was a real event. And then that fantasy was processed into the belief system that the woman he was fantasizing about that he thought he created that fantasy processed into a belief system that she was out there and that belief system because it was such a powerful seed planted is turning into a reality because he's mesmerized. He's taken over. His life has changed from this fantasy. And then you do the split screen. And she's sitting there going, who is he? Like, who is he? And she's, she's really aroused at this point. And it's so vivid. Her fantasy was so vivid that it became an imprint. And that imprint was sent to her subconscious mind as though it was a real event that she had experienced. Mm hmm. And then the processing of the subconscious mind turned that event, that fantasy, into a belief that he was real and he existed somewhere. And because it was such an impactful fantasy that she just, it overtook her. She was breathless. That she was manifesting. All, every time she kept thinking about 
being dominated by this beautiful man, it kept manifesting. And then he was thinking the same thing as her at the same time. So he started manifesting that reality. So this is where the two of them became master manifestors. So she's breathless. She's like, she always thought she was a woman that was in complete control. And I would never let some man dominate me, but during that fantasy that was actually telepathy, him sending that fantasy to her because they were on the same frequency. She thought she would, it was degrading. I would never let a guy talk to me like that. But in the fantasy, she was aroused. So now she's confused. So she's sitting at home in confusion. And she's like, I need to have a cigarette to figure this out. Like, she's normally completely a master of her emotions, but she's taken. She doesn't like that. She doesn't like feeling like she lost control. So she says, I need to have a cigarette. Like, I don't smoke often, but it was like she needed that after sex smoke. Like, that's how aroused she was. So she took her cigarette and her lighter and she lit it. And she sat and pondered because music was always her resort to like clear her head. And she sat there going, is there a song for this? Like, is there a song for this? She was so taken and she couldn't even think of a song to match the frequency of arousal that she was at. And as she sat and inhaled on her cigarette, she heard the voice of Stevie Nicks go through her mind. And she heard Dreams, the song by Fleetwood Mac. So she turned on her TV. And waited for it to load. went to YouTube and she thought if I just listen to this song I will get it out of my system like I got work to do I got studying to do I can't be having my head in la la fantasy land of being submissive to some guy dominating me who's super hot well anyway so she figures a song is gonna help her it's gonna help her so she speaks into her remote and says dreams by Fleetwood Mac with lyrics she waits and there it is she puts it on at first she cranks it up she loves it it's a great song and then she turns it down because the song is in, like, she's just confused. Normally she cranks it. Right now, she's confused. She's so confused. And she thinks, okay, maybe if I sing it, maybe if I speak the words, there's a message in the song. There's gotta be a message in the song. So, she puts it on with lyrics and reads the, reads the song. Now here we go again. You say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? It's only right that you should play the way you feel it. But listen carefully to the sound of your loneliness like a heartbeat drives you mad and she's feeling a little mad in the stillness of remembering what you had 
the fantasy. And what you lost, the fantasy. And what you had, enjoying being dominated. And what you lost, the moment. Thunder only happens when it is raining. Players only love you when you're playing. And then he thinks back to the restaurant with the servers hitting on him and how odd it was that he didn't want that kind of attention from them because he was so mesmerized with this fantasy woman he created in his mind not knowing she was real. You'll know. So now she's sitting there listening and he likes his old vinyl and he goes home and he pulls out Rumors by Flitwood Mac. He just feels like listening to a little Stevie Nicks. And he puts a song Dreams on, why not? And then he starts thinking about her again. Not knowing that she's listening to the exact same song at the exact same time. So the medium to their telepathy is music and they haven't figured this out yet but they soon will in this stillness remembering of what you had and what you lost the fantasy it was so real for the both of them it felt like a loss what you lost when it's raining. Players only love you when they're playing. And this is the moment they both realize this is something special. Women, they will come and they will go. And he's had many women come and go because he, he's beautiful. When the rain washes you clean, you'll know he wants something more. He wants something of substance. Oh, thunder only happens when it's raining. He's being shooken up. Players only love you when they're playing. She's done. She's been celibate for a long time. She's done with the players. Say, women, they'll come and they will go. And he's thinking about all the build a bitches that have came and gone. When the rain washes you clean, you'll know. He can't do that no more. He's leveled up. He wants the real deal. He wants her. That woman of his fantasy. You'll know. You'll know when you find her. So, here they are. Both stuck in confusion. The split screen. So then she goes into being stuck in a moment her little fantasy world and as she's daydreaming this is where I pick another card because now it's her the last video was him now it's her now she's tapping into her little naughty side not knowing why all triggered by Hauser Wicked Game. And she thinks to herself, if the song Wicked Game got her there the first time, it's sure to get her there again. So after turning off her TV, she turns it back on. goes back to YouTube goes to her music and there it is Hauser Wicked Game and she's like this will get me there got me there last time 
And that's it. She is there. Within a heartbeat. She is there. So, as Hauser Wicked Game is playing in the background, she allows herself to just drift off into fantasy bliss. And as she's drifting off, her brain goes to a side straddle position, straight to sex. They very got past the naughty point. Her trench coat is thrown somewhere else. The dominatrix, that little session is ended. They're on round two. So she is fantasizing about how she wants it to go. She fantasizes a pose with significance. The shape of this pose replicates a specific pattern the ancient Chinese used when fusing two pieces of jade together. She lies on her side, bending one leg at the knee and drawing it upward. His knees behind her, straddling her side on and entering her at a sideways angle, holding her shoulders to keep her in place. She had a taste of the little dominatrix. She doesn't mind it no more. Secret is she never did mind it. It's precise positioning, which gets both her and him in the mood for controlled, disciplined sex. And as she closes her eyes, she finds herself so aroused. And she's once again there.